Hey, it's Kanu with Real Love, Real Stories TV and Podcast. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Today, my guest is Francesca Anastasi. She is based in Vancouver, BC, Canada. She's the founder of the Shimmy Mob, which is a belly dance flash mob held every year in support of victims of abuse. She's also a business consultant whose mission is to inspire women. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to trust and love again after being hurt. Here's a question for you. Have you ever been in a relationship where trust was broken? How did you learn to trust again? Let's hear Francesca's story. Welcome, Francesca, to Real Love, Real Stories. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. I know that right now you're married. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, and today... It's kind of a a, a heavy-ish topic, but it's one that we need to talk about. So um, so we're talking about how to trust again after being heartbroken, after, you know, whatever love, sometimes those, you know, adversities that love brings our way. So maybe to start off with a little bit, can you share, um, you know, what has your experience been like in terms of, trust and and how that sometimes can be damaged Mm -hmm. well I was married previously this is my third marriage so you would think I actually do have a lot of experience (laughs) (laughs) and uh yes heartbroken um in the ways that you you know you have certain expectations when you get into a relationship and you think it's going to be and they lived happily ever after, and then things don't go the way you thought they would um, for different reasons. And you, you find yourself being hurt. My first marriage was 14 years, for 14 years. My second one was for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And both were devastating uh, in the end, you know, the, the divorces. And it was very, very difficult to to even consider wanting to be in a relationship. Um, After that, I was so done. I had been hurt deeply. And and I remember being so, as people say broken, I don't really like to use the word broken because I don't believe we break. I believe we're resilient. We can be bent. We can be pushed down. But I don't don't think we we actually ever are broken. but I, it, that's how it felt, though. It felt like I was in a million pieces. I felt like I, it was, I was shattered. And there was no way I could ever trust again. And I remember going to counseling because it totally messed me up. Right. Um, I had lost complete trust in being in a relationship. How can I ever trust again? Mm-hmm. And, and I remember my counselor saying to me, why would I said I'm done? I I don't want anyone in my like. I'm so done. I don't need a man. I can just do it by myself. Which I think that was key number one. So just you were done I, with love. Like I was, I was done in being in a relationship and feeling like I was just you know either the trophy or just there to be for the financial support and mm-hmm. other things that were going on in the background that I was not aware of. There, so there were a lot of things. Right and. Um, so I felt used, really. I, and I have to say, in both marriages, I felt used. Mm. And um, it, it was just like, I don't need this. This is too painful. Like, I, I was so done. And right. like I was saying, I was talking to my counselor, and she said to me, why would you deny yourself the, the chance of happiness if the right person comes along? Mm. And I said, I said to her, how do I know I am not going to be hurt again? How in the world am I going to know? Like, like, I'm, like, I can't take it anymore. I cannot mentally take any more of this. And, and she said, you look for the flags. You look for the red flags. And when you see a red flag, mm-hmm. you address it. And then if there's another red flag, you address that too. Right. And you start seeing a pattern. And when you start seeing a pattern, that's when you say, enough if the pattern is not in the direction right yeah and that's exactly what happened and um 
you know, you, you kind of go cautiously and you really approach a relationship from a completely different angle mm -hmm. without being, why did you say that? Why did you do that? Like, you still have to be. <laughs> but it's really about paying attention. And I think the other part is, is paying attention, addressing the issue. If you see anything that you kind of start questioning, you know, you have any questions about, Mm -hmm. And also, I think the most important one, I think, is that not having to need to be in a relationship. Ha you not having the need to be in to a relationship. To be in a relationship. I think That's that is key. Right. I think, yeah, because if you don't, it's, it's easy to, to kind of end it, right? Because, right. yes, it will still be a little painful, but it'd be easy to say, I don't need this. So you don't invest so much into it that then your trust is broken because then you can see, you, you, you treat your relationship differently. I think what it boils down to, based on my experience, I've been now with my husband for six years and today is but on the first day. And we literally, like, we look at each other and we go, we don't know what happened, but this is almost like the dream relationship. Like oh, we, nice. wake up, we wake up in the middle of the night, we're holding hands, you know, oh. it, it's that, it's that kind of relationship. Like every day is a fun day. Every day we've never had an argument, even though we may have different points of views. Right. And, and I think the, the recipe, if you will, I think the ingredients was, I've been really looking at it. I'm like, after, you know, two failed marriages, after having had other relationships that were just complete disasters and, very hurtful mm -hmm. what are the ingredients what is it that makes it work right mm -hmm. and and it's that deep respect that we have for each other that no matter what the other person does that we may not necessarily agree with mm -hmm. there's so much respect that it overlooks anything else nice and we have that at a mutual in a, in a mutual way at the same level I think and that's what I think is the basis of it so I think it starts with the respect you see if the other person re respects you all the time and you do the same in the opposite direction mm -hmm. there is no going wrong I think the foundation of love really starts with respect the moment there's no respect there's no love what happened in the other relationships because you said this is your third marriage are you comfortable sharing like why was that trust broken in those two? I was only 21 okay. uh, when I got married. Actually, I don't even think I was 21 yet. Um, and I think I personally married for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. to start with. I wanted to feel like somebody, someone cared for me that actually cared about me. Oh. And I think, I think that's the wrong premise to get into a relationship in the first place. So in, in my case, I was very needy. I wanted that. I wanted to feel like someone, I didn't feel like I was worthy of love. So if somebody showed me that they were interested enough in me to get married, that, you know, <laughs> then I was worth something. And, and I wanted that affection and, you know, the, my ideal relationship at the time was, you know, husband comes home, hugs you, kisses you, cuddles you. And he wasn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. He was very distant. Mm -hmm. He had his own hobbies. He had his own way of, he had his own things. And, you know, so it was, we were very different. Let's put it that way. We were very, very different. So I felt that that was, um, you know, it's, it wasn't the kind of relationship I wanted. I wanted, I wanted the affection and I didn't feel like I was getting that from. Right, right. So that, that I felt betrayed because when you marry someone and they tell you they love you, mm -hmm. you expect to have more affection. And I didn't get, I didn't feel I was getting that. Right. So that was with the first one. The second one, we, he had addiction problems, which, you know, kind of, came to the surface after the marriage and that was big big um break of trust for me because he told me he didn't have those issues and then he did right right <laughs> and, and and it was just on and on there it was just like a whole list of 10 years of so these were two very difficult sort of relationships and you know um 
So how do you then overcome the stress to get into this beautiful relationship that you have now that is, you know, respect being the foundation of that relationship where, you know, you talked about even you wake up in the middle of the night and you're holding hands. And I think that's just so beautiful. But how do you get to that point after trust has been broken? I think it has, it has to be equal. And, and it was not easy. It was not an easy, all of a sudden, I trust this person. I was terrified. Uh, when he asked me to marry him, I said, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I said, not going to happen. No. <laughs> Been down that road before. <laughs> not doing this again. Yeah. And he kept telling me. So I said, okay, we'll live together, but I won't. I won't. We won't get married. And, and, and he kept saying, it's, it's, let's just make it legal. It's going to be fine. And I'm like, no, how do I know you're not going to turn? Right now it's wonderful, but how do I know that this is not going to be another one, another relationship that as soon as we get married, things are going to change? Yeah. How do I know? And I think part of the reason that I ended up saying yes eventually is because I had, no, I had met him a long time before. It was, he was a reconnection, so it wasn't a brand new person that I just met off the street okay. with someone that I had known from previous years um, through a business course that I was taking. Mm -hmm. And um, we were in the same class. We did homework together back then only at business relationship. And that's all it was. And he had always been very kind. And that was the one thing I remembered about him. And when we reconnected, he was always so kind nice. and but it was he wasn't just kind to me like my counselor my counselor had said pay attention to the flag so I was looking for any sign that would tell me run the opposite way right okay so I was actually looking for give me a sign so I go <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't looking for the sign to stay I was looking for the sign to go oh, and yeah. I, I could not find any and then anyone that knew him that would meet me would say oh he's such a kind person he's such a nice person I'm like mm-hmm yeah like, uh, where's <laughs> this red flag I need it <laughs> yeah right and I was like okay who are his friends that was another thing I wanted to you know where are your friends do you have any friends that was the other thing um, because you you get to know people around their friends how they treat people around them right, and how they talk about other people. And he was always kind about everyone. So that was the foundation for me, to seeing how kind he was with everyone and with me. And at the nut of it, it's genuine. It was not fake kindness. Yeah. And you can tell. Yeah. You could totally tell that it was not made up kindness. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, and slowly, slowly, I kind of started like, okay. But it was terrifying. Like, I'm not going to say, okay, then I trusted him and I married him. If you saw me the day we got married, I looked like I had Parkinson's disease from how hard I was shaking. Oh, no. What was, I was going on? I was so, I was terrified. I was still scared. Even though there had been no flags, I still, and I, you know, I really cared for him and I loved him and I respected him and he had, he had not done anything right. to give me any reason to be afraid. I was terrified. I was so scared. Yeah. And, but you know what? My, my thought was, I've done it twice before. I know where the door is. I know how to exit. <laughs> so at that point, that was my reasoning. I'm like, I know how to exit this time. I know how to exit quick. I'm not going to let it be 14 years. I'm not going to let it be 10 years. If I see something happen, I exit. I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I kind of had to give myself the courage to go through with it and trust that what I was seeing was real. Yeah. And that it would last. So did he know that this is what you were going through? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, oh yes. He, he, knew all, he, he knew all my fears. Okay. I was going through nightmares. He knew it all. He knew it all. Yeah. And he was there to take care of me and he was awesome. And now you said you're six years into your marriage? Yes. Yeah. And Actually, so we've been married. We've been six years together. We've been married four and a half years. Oh, four and a half years. Okay. But we've been together for six years. So we've been together every day for, for the past six years. 
Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So for somebody out there who, you know, you know, whether he or she, their heart has been broken and they want to get to a point to where they can trust again and open themselves to, uh, to love, or maybe they're already in a relationship and they still have the blockage, kind of like what you were going through. Um, what would be some tips and, you know, advice that you can give that person who's listening, who might be going through what you were going through before? I think my biggest tip would be take it slow. Okay. Take it slow, you know, um, really get to know the person mm -hmm. under, under different circumstances and around people. How does a person react in the traffic? How does the person react if the food at a restaurant arrives late? How does a person react if somebody's rude? Like all of those little things will tell you a lot about a person uh, because it's, that is a, sorry to cut you off, but that is a good point. You're stuck in, tra in traffic with someone and they have road rage. Right. Whether they have road rage or they just curse somebody off. If they're going to do that with a stranger, they're going to do that with you when they get very familiar with you. That is a good right? point. So you, you, will see, you will see a lot about a person under different circumstances and and getting to know their friends and what they're like around their friends. And you can get to, or their family, if they got family around as well, just to see how they interact with people yeah. that they've known for a long time. Yeah. I think that's the, one of the things that's very important. So taking it slow, really getting to know the person. Don't rush it. Don't, you know, like, I would say any relationship where the other person wants to, oh, this is love, let's seal the deal right away, mm -hmm. run. <laughs> run. <laughs> you mean no like way. when they propose early? When they want to get married right away and or move in right away, like where everything is too quick. Uh -huh. I, think it's, I think it's a sign that it's going too fast and you, you don't have enough time to really get to know the, the other person. It's better to take it slow no matter how your hormones are going and the whole chemical chemistry is going on but to give it that time um i think that's probably the biggest tip i can give and it's the hardest one to follow because when you're you know you feel like you're head over heels at first and all you can do is think about the person and you can't wait for the text and take it slow yeah it's slow what's the rush okay in the end what is the rush why rush into something that could turn out to be a complete disaster? Why not take the time for something that could be potentially wonderful? Right. Right. So well, that would be my, that those would be my tips. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for that. But, you know, when you're smitten <laughs> and, you know, I think sometimes that kind of clouds your judgment, right? Yes, and it does. Of course it does. You are smitten, but don't commit to anything. Oh, that's all I'm saying. You can stay smitten. And you can, mm -hmm. you can still hang out with the person. I'm not saying not to do that. Right. I'm just saying not to commit to anything too quick, too soon. Like right. moving in together quickly or getting married too quickly. Like really get to know the person first for, in all the different aspects, as many aspects as possible. Like I said earlier, see how do they react? What are they like around people? You know, yeah. Are they yeah. going to pick a fight just to prove that they are you know, to, to show that they're protecting you, so they're going to pick a fight. Are they that kind of person? Do you want to be around that kind of person? Or does that make you feel protected? I don't know. You know, like you, you have to kind of, <laughs> you decide for yourself the kind of person you want. And, and I think then that's easier to trust mm -hmm. in that direction, in that, that way. Sometimes we see these red flags, right? That we're, you know, because they don't all happen at the same time. You're like, oh, you know, I would have been mad too. Maybe he was hungry or maybe he was this and then another thing happens. Or maybe he was, it, traffic was just so horrible and this person did cut him off, you know. But there are little nuggets of like all oh, these red flags along the way. And you, you know, when we think we're in love, we tend to overlook all those. And then, like you say, that feeling subsides and then boom, they just explode to you as the partner. And then it just becomes this really horrible relationship. And sometimes it's even too late then, right? Because you feel like it's too late, you're married and maybe you have had a kid or maybe you're pregnant and you know, then you kind of feel stuck. And that's too common of a story. 
Oh, yeah, sadly. Right, right. Sadly. So like most marriages are like that. Most marriages are like, okay, I'm in a marriage that I'm not happy in. Yeah. Right? And why did that happen? I think that when you are with the right person and there is that mutual respect, because it really boils, it goes back down to that. When you respect the other person, you will never do anything to hurt them. Number one, love doesn't hurt. End of story. It should not. If, if it does, it's not love. Yeah. If it hurts, it's not love. Yeah. So, um, like the expression, I love you so much, it hurts. Uh, no. <laughs> it does not hurt. <laughs> it should not hurt. Because if it's hurting, there's something wrong there. There's something imbalanced. So how long did that go on before, from the time he proposed and said, let's get married, to the time he... A year, it was almost a year and a half. Yeah, he was because very- he actually proposed. He proposed right away, fairly quickly, and I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So yeah, yeah. Well, I love but that. So- re- re- remember though that I had known him from before. Though he wasn't someone I had just right, right. So yeah. there, w- there was an established. We did know each other, even though it was not in a romantic level. We did. We did have a certain level of trust already established from before. So yeah, and I think you mentioned that you already knew that he was very respectful i think is the word you used right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um so what are some of the ways that you guys do now to uh keep your marriage fire burning you know what it's actually effortless i love that and it really sometimes we look at each other when we hear people say marriage takes work because we look at each other and we go well, then that's the wrong marriage. Right. Why should it take work? It does not take work. It's just a natural thing. We do things for each other just naturally. Like he'll bring me a coffee or I'll bring him something. Like it's just second, like it's just automatic. We don't think of what do I have to do so that my marriage is going to work? Do I have to go up to him and kiss him 30 times so that our marriage is going <laughs> to We don't do any of that. It's just, it's just who we are. We just do things for each other constantly. We go for walks together. Like if I, if I want to go for a walk just because I need the exercise, I'll say, I'm going for a walk. You want to come? Sure, I'll come with you. That kind of thing. So it's not, um, I, can't, I can't give a tip on how to make your marriage better, how to work on it because we're not working on it. It's just natural for us. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, we I- hug a lot. We hug a lot, but that's, spontaneous it's not because you know it's just a spontaneous i think we probably hug 20 times a day if not more and it's spontaneous that's awesome yeah no i mean you're right if it's you know when you when i ask the question of what do you do to work on it it, you know and maybe that kind of denotes a feeling of like something is broken but you know like you just shared right now you hug a lot that's you know that's how you guys sort of stay on that track of, um, of keeping the fire burning. And I love that you're saying it's effortless, you know, because that's when you know it's the right thing. Yeah, and we want that for everybody else. <laughs> yeah. we don't always, sometimes we wonder, it's like, is it because we've had a lot of experience, we've been hurt? He's been hurt too. So is it because of that? The willingness to both trust again, maybe? There's also yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well... That gives me hope, for sure. There is hope. There is hope. I do want to one day say that, you know, I am with somebody and it's effortless. Because, oh my God, there's there's just a feeling of freeness to that actually saying that out loud. Yes. Yes. Something that's effortless, you know, you don't have to put a whole lot of work and when you're working on it too hard, it's not the right thing. It should not be any work at all. This week's episode is brought to you by Real Love, Real Stories Shopify store. Enter episode 10, that's the word episode, and then one zero to get you 10% discount. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Do you have a love story? Or do you know somebody with a love story? If so, shoot me an email. K-A-N-U-K-A-Y-I at gmail.com please go to my youtube channel real love real stories podcast and subscribe and also follow me on instagram and facebook real love real stories 
Till next time.